and you must meet this criteria, both of you, right? The criteria is one. That the criteria has to be unambiguous, right? The criteria must be unambiguous, meaning it should not be open up to interpretation, right? It has to be clear cut. That's the criteria I stand by. So you cannot just quote a verse where it could be opened up to ambiguity or explanation. So show me a verse that's clear cut, unambiguous, and clear to the point. You can both answer if you want. He'll go with one another. First of all, in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 48 verse 12, my friend. This is Yahweh speaking to, uh, to Isaiah. He says, listen to me, Jacob, Israel whom I have called. I am he. I am the first and I am the last. My own hand laid the foundations of the earth and my right hand spread out the heavens. When I summon them, they all stand up together. So this is in the Old Testament in Isaiah before the incarnation where Christ says this to, um, is, um, to Isaiah that he is the first and the last. Now if we look at Revelation 22 verse 30, this is what Jesus Christ says to Apostle John. Let's get to Revelation And if you wouldn't mind, I'll, I'll use mine as well. Go on, you go. So in Revelation 22 verse 13, Jesus Christ says this, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. One minute, who calls himself the first and the last in the Quran? In Surah 57, Allah calls himself the first and the last. Now this is Jesus Christ, not only does he call himself the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, meaning an eternal perspective of Jesus Christ, but he also calls himself the first and the last, which is a divine attribute class to Yahweh in the Old Testament. And now this man is going to go to Melchizedek about him being the first and the last, but my friend Melchizedek had no genealogy, so it cannot have been about, it cannot have been about an eternal being about, uh, of Melchizedek. So when Jesus says he's the first and the last, this clearly shows that he He's a divine being, my friend. Yes, and I just yeah. want to quickly go to... Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, 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 so in Luke chapter 6, verse 46, he says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Now, the Lord, Lord, the Greek word there is kuleos, kuleos. And if you go to 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 58, it's the same kuleos, kuleos. And throughout the whole Old Testament, you see kuleos, kuleos being referred to as the Father. So he's clearly saying, people are calling him the Almighty God. And they're not doing as they say. So he's questioning, why do you call me God? And do not act accordingly. So clearly, it shows a precedent that people are worshipping Jesus. Is that, is that your answer? Is that what you yeah. say? Right. Let me respond. Okay. Now, first of all, right. What's your name? Ash? Ish. 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 What's your name? Thomas. Thomas. Do you know what? You know, sorry, when I heard Thomas, you know Thomas the Tank Engine. Sorry, when I was small, I was just... <laughs> I'm not taking it with me. Anyway, right. So, he said, Ash said, sorry, Ish said, he quoted the Quran, right? Where Allah says, Huwa awwal, that he is the first, and Huwa wal akhar, that Allah is the last. Yeah, we don't dispute that. Of course, God is the first and the last. Before God, there is no one. And after God, no one will exist. God is the first and the last. We have no issues with this. Now, he quoted the Old Testament, where it says in Isaiah that God, Yahweh, right? You quoted Yahweh. Does anyone in the New Testament call Jesus Yahweh? I challenge you. Could you, no, hold on, let me finish. Did you not say in the Old Testament, that it was Yahweh that it will be the first and the last. Sorry, Yahweh did you not say Jesus. this? Right. Show me in the New Testament that any of the disciples refer to Jesus as Yahweh. That's, that's number one. That's challenge number one. Show me in the New Testament where Jesus is referred to as Yahweh to show that this is speaking about Jesus in the Old Testament. Right? Number one. Number two. In Exodus chapter 3 verse 14, when Moses went to, came to God, he went towards God and he said, when I go to the children of Israel, who should I say sent me? What was, how did God respond to Moses? He says, Ehye, Esher, Ehye. And some commentators say, Ehye, Esher, Yahweh. Which is actually referring to the Father this is speaking about, not Jesus. But if he insists that this is speaking about Jesus, 
Show me in the New Testament that Jesus, that Jesus is referring to Jesus is referred to as Yahweh in the, in the New Testament. That's number one. Number two, he quoted Melchizedek, and he says, "Well, this is speaking about that Melchizedek has no genealogy." Yeah, of course. But he also says he has no beginning of life, neither end of day. Read it for yourself. Open it up. Mel, uh, Hebrews chapter seven, verse one. It says that. Melchizedek is king of Salem, priest of the Most High, no mother, no right? He has no mother and no father, no beginning of days, no end of life. You forgot that part. He forgot to read that part. No, hold on. Show me in the verse that he's speaking, that where it says, without beginning of days or end of life, it's referring to genealogy. Show me that in Isaiah. So show me that in um, Hebrews 7 verse 1. Also, in addition to that, he said that Jesus said in Revelation that I am the first and I am the last. Okay, let's examine that. Did Jesus die on the cross? Of course he did. That actually proved that Jesus cannot be the first and the last. Did he, was he born from a human mother? Of course. So he had a beginning of days. Did Jesus die after 33 years of his existence? Yeah, he did. He died on the cross. So how does that constitute him having no beginning of days, no end of life? In fact, I can show you someone greater than that. In Proverbs chapter 8, verse 23, the wisdom of God has been personified into a person. What does that mean in Hebrew? In Proverbs chapter 8, verse 23, open it up for yourself. Yeah. What, I asked you, <laughs> what, do you ask me? what does it mean in Hebrew? The word about the, word about the, the wisdom being the word of God, what does that mean in Hebrew? No, but the, let, let, me, let, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. It, means, it means possessed. Okay. Jesus is the eternal wisdom which the Father possessed. Let me open up Proverbs. Yeah, no. can, can I have means. a challenge for the verse I presented? Okay, I will. Just do it. But, okay, I want to speak now. First of all, you talked about why isn't Jesus called Yahweh in the New Testament. First of all, that Yahweh was a... Yahweh was Jews in the term of the Hebrew language. And in the Old Testament, you can clearly see Jesus in Genesis 35, in Genesis 19.24, where Jesus is described as Yahweh. Okay? We also see in the Old Testament where the Father has an eternal son, who, uh, such as in Proverbs 30, verse 4, it says this, Who has ascended to heaven and come down? Who has gathered the wind in his fist? Who has wrapped up the waters in his garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name? Though Jesus may not be referred to Yahweh because of the language barriers, he is also referred to the eternal son in the New Testament. So if you're going to say that Jesus, where, where, does, where does he say that Jesus is, um, is Yahweh in the New Testament? You have to look at other titles, which he, in the Old Testament it says he was, such as the first and the last, the Lord of the Sabbath, now he's referred to the Kyrios, which is in the New Testament. He refers, he referred to as the eternal son and the um, wisdom of the Father. You have to question that as well. Just because he's not referred to Yahweh in the New Testament does not debate, refute the fact that Jesus was not God. Because we also see, see other titles which I have said to you, which proves Jesus was God in the New Testament. Now, well, with Melchizedek, for the, for the sake of argument, let's say if he had any, no genealogy, we also believe in something called the Christophany, where such as in the Old Testament, Jesus revealed himself to many prophets such as through the angel of the Lord. You know, Jesus revealed himself to many prophets such as to Jacob, to Abraham. So even if Melchizedek had no genealogy, some people may say that he was a Christophany where it was in a pre-incarnate version meeting himself to Abraham. Okay? And I also want to bring up this verse about Jesus Christ being God. So first of all, as it says this in Proverbs 34, who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name? Surely you know. Who is the son in the New Testament? We know that is Jesus Christ. He's the monogenes, which means the unique son of God. Not just the son of God, but means the unique begotten son of God, okay? And here it says this, my friend, in the book of Isaiah 48 verse 13, I want to bring you up. My own hand laid the foundations of the earth, and my right hand spread out the heavens. When I summon them, they all stand up together, okay? So remember this, it says this. My own hand laid the foundations of the earth, okay? This is Yahweh speaking again in the Old Testament, okay? If you look at the book of Hebrews, chapter 110, the Father says this about the Son. In the beginning, Lord, Kyrios, you lay the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. So we see in the Old Testament where it says, where it says this, right? It says, 
It says this, it was my hand that laid the foundations of the earth. My right hand that spread out the heavens above. Who is the right hand of the Father? Who is sitting in the right hand of the Father? It's Jesus Christ. Now we see in the New Testament, as I said to you again, it was Jesus Christ created the heavens and the earth, which clearly proved himself, uh, clearly proved himself that he was God. Finish? Right. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, I want to I want to respond to you, and I'll go back to him. Right. So remember what the question. The, what, remember what I said in the beginning of this conversation. Right. I said, show me an unambiguous verse. Right. This is. Hold on one second. This was the criteria that I laid down in the beginning of this conversation. Show me an unambiguous verse that Jesus says, I am God, worship me. And you have not shown that. You have shown verses that I open up to ambiguity. Now you mentioned earlier about, did you mention that Jesus worshiped? Yeah, so in Luke chapter 6 verse 46, he says, why do you for me kill those people? Which is talking about, and we have, we have first references from for example, 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 1, where the Father is called kill those people. It means Almighty God. So I'm just curious why, why the disciples at the time were calling Jesus the Almighty God. And so that's what not ambiguous as well. I want to see a syllogism how that is ambiguous. So, so hold on, are you saying that Jesus was called the Almighty God? Yeah, he was called Cleos Cleos. So right? show me in the New Testament where Jesus was referred to as Almighty yeah, God. Yeah, I got Cleos Cleos. It's talking about being God. Give me the verse of the New Testament yeah, where Jesus was... Because I have never seen a verse in the New Testament where Jesus called when the Jesus Almighty God. The he said Lord God. Yeah, yeah. No, but there's a step, there's a no, different. No, no, hold on, no, no, hold on, hold on. Let me finish because I like you to know. Go on. Okay, so if you read from the Greek Septuagint, it says Kurios Kurios. Now, the English translation is wrong. The Greek says Kurios Kurios. So I've shown you. No, 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 no. What you've shown me. The Greek Wait, No, hold on one second. What you've shown me where. You've interrupted me. I was trying to make a few points. Okay, you can do a few. Okay, so I've shown you in the Old Testament. If you go to a translation, my phone's about to die, so I can't do it. In the Greek it says it means it means right. It's called about Christianism, right? And it's, it literally talks about being worshipped. That's what it talks about Jesus being worshipped. Yeah, so Jesus does not deny that. I want to talk about the two. Yeah, yeah. they talk. I just want to. So I'll go through a few points and then you can go on, go on, go on. and then you can speak. So Kulias Kulias in the Old Testament, throughout the Old Testament, that was just one reference. Greek lexicon. It's not a lexicon you have to look at. It's just a semantic. So if you look at the semantics of the old... It is worship. It is worship. Okay, okay. Yeah, so... Sorry, just, I, uh, hold yeah, on one second. I, yeah, I appreciate, like, brothers... Like, stop, sorry, can you just move... Yeah, stop away. introducing new points. Yeah, so, because there's too uh, many new yeah, points yeah, coming yeah, obviously. in. So in the Old Testament, yeah. throughout the Old Testament, I employ anyone to look this up. Kulios, Kulios, Lord, Lord, God, God, is used to talk about the Father being God. Now, the caveat you keep on saying that I'm emphasizing Lord, Lord in that verse, and I'm not actually seeing the caveat, but I am. It says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? And then he goes on to say, if you do what I say, you'll be a wise man with strong foundation. So he's actually emphasizing the previous point and emphasizing the previous verse with context. I am Lord, Lord, I am God, right? Do as I say, and you'll be a wise man. Okay. Now, why? Instead of that, is he just denying it? Okay, so I want to respond to you. Right? Hold on, I, re I want to respond to you. What I am saying to you, what you showed me, where it says, Lord God, right? That's what you showed me. And that's referring to the Father. Yeah, the Father is Lord God. But that's what, no, no, hold on, one, like, one second. You just misrepresent No, do you know why? No, do you know why that I find that more accurate? And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I find that more accurate than what you're trying to profess, right? Because the Father is identified as the only true God according to Jesus. Yes or no? Yeah, but no, 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 hold on, one second. One second, one second. Is the Father, according to John 17 verse 3, ident don't worry, we'll get to verse 5. All right? We will get to verse 5. We agree. Do you agree between you two, without arguing, that the Father is identified as the only true okay, God. So yes John, or no? Okay, yes, because we are we believe in the monarchy. Then that's it. Where the son okay listen Finish. to this. Then oh, listen no. to this. Where we believe the Father is the is greater no, no. than Jesus in the role of ranking. So Jesus is not denying the fact that he is not God. He's just affirming affirming the deity of the Father. Oh no. Okay? Read it to yourself. He's just this affirming is, this is life. He's just affirming the deity of the Father. Okay? And I really okay if you look at John 17 verse 5 it says Father glorify me with the glory I have with you 
for the world began. Now we can clearly see that Jesus was here before the world began. So he was in heaven with the Father before the world began. I have, a, I have a question for you. No, I want, I want to explain is, this. Is, let me, is, let me, is God giving glory? Let me explain this. Let me explain this. So, so we can clearly see that Jesus was with the Father before the world began. So he was not just a mere man, but he must, he must be surely divine. Now if you look at 1 John 1 2, it says this. The life appeared, we have seen it and testified to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life. It says the eternal life, meaning Jesus Christ must have been eternal. So if Jesus Christ was eternal, it must really show you, my friend, my, my, uh, my friend, that Jesus was God. Now when Jesus says about the Father, I mean the only true God is just simply Jesus affirming the nature of the Godness, that divinity the Father has. And because the Father has a divine nature, because the Son is begotten eternally from the Father, he gets that uh, nature. They only want to make video and all he gets that nature. He gets that nature from the Father. He gets that. He gets that nature from the Father. And because the Father, because the Father has a godly divine nature, the Son derives that nature from the Father. Which is why we see in John 3:16, Christ is called the Monogenes, the unique Son of God, because He shares that divine essence with the Father. Let me respond to some of the words because there's a lot that's been thrown out, as you said, thrown out. You're thrown out a lot, right? Now, wait, wait, you didn't, wait, you didn't. Ash, let me finish, man. You Look, the Greek, you have to go to the Greek where it says he was worshipped in. Okay. The Greek says Jesus was worshipped. Okay. The Greek. Okay. So now, I go back to the point I raised, alright? I said to you that Jesus, did he receive worship? You said, yes, he did. There was no objection. Daniel received worship. There was no objection. Is, G is Daniel God? You said, oh, no, just hold on, wait, Daniel, wait, Just because Daniel Ash. did not reject, just because it says Ash. in there, Let me finish, does not mean Daniel did not reject it. Bearing in mind, Ash. Jesus Christ, many, Why many Ash. people no Why paid homage to Jesus, worshipped him, Why don't he did not reject it. Why, Why is it? So many people did it, he did not reject a single one. Allow just because finish. Daniel got worshipped once, did not mean he did not reject it. Ish, ish. Right. You've got to be patient here. Right. So, did Daniel receive worship? Yes, he did. Did he object to worship? No, he didn't. Does that make Daniel God? No. Well, it's not the. Oh, oh, wait, hold on one second. He received the same worship that Jesus received, and he did not object. And. The Greek word used here is proskunio. Now, worship. Now, proskunio means, worship. means to pay homage. It means worship. It means to pay means homage. As well. Get out. Get out the lexicon. Get out the Greek lexicon. Show you for proskunio. Get out yeah, the so Greek lexicon. I'm just curious. For proskunio. I just want to clarify. Something. Hold on one second. One second. Right. Now I said in John 17 verse three. Right. In John 17 verse three, Jesus identifies. The Father as the only true God. So that completely contradicts everything you've come forward with. Yeah. Now you caught it first. Well, oh, hold oh, on that one nature second. Is one shared. second. Uh, the ish, Father, the Son ish, of the Holy Spirit. Let me finish. What I'm saying, right? Now, in verse five, it says, "Give me the glory that I had with you before the world was." Now. Does that mean because Jeremiah, for example, existed in the knowledge of God? In Jeremiah chapter 1, in Jeremiah chapter 1, he said, I knew you in your mother's womb and I made you a prophet to the children of Israel. So God knew Jeremiah in the pre existent world. God the Father had knowledge of his pre creation. So when he says, give me the glory that I had with you before the world was, even for argument's sake, let's say for argument's sake that Jesus did exist in the beginning. For argument's sake. The knowledge of God existed in the beginning with God as well. Does that, is the no, wait, God. wait, wait, can I finish? Can I finish? Is the knowledge of God. I want to finish. I want to finish. I want to finish. I am going to go to Proverbs chapter 8. No, I'm going to read this. I'm sorry. I've got to read this because I'm going to lose the point. I'm going to lose track of what I'm saying. And then can I go to 17 3? Because I think we can. Yeah, because the Proverbs going to 17 5, and I don't think that's going to do it. Okay, we will. I just want to just go to 17 5. No, no, it didn't work because we're just adding on the verse. I want to explain why. Let's go. 
one fruit to the only one fruit bowl. Right, let's go to Proverbs chapter 8, verse 23. You'll be surprised what it says, right? I, I think I'm right. surprised. Right, it says, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Now, look at this. If you think that Jesus is God because he existed before the world was in uh, John 17, verse 5, let's read Proverbs chapter 8, verse 22. The Lord created me at the beginning of his works. Wow, this sounds like this is a person now being personified. What does that mean in Hebrew? No, hold on, let me finish. If you, you let like me finish. To go to the language, no, 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 no. Let me finish. You possess. No, let me finish. That's what the word means in Hebrew. Let me finish. I haven't so finished. The Father possessed the I haven't the even finished though. Jesus. But I haven't even finished. Since no, 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 the time no, no, of creation. No, 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 Ish, no, no, I haven't even finished. Are you jumping down my throat already? <laughs> Give me a chance. Right. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work. The first of the acts of old. Ages ago, I was set up. Now this is now someone who's been personified as a person. He said, I was set up at first before the beginning of the earth. Think about this now, right? When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. Before he had made the earth with its fields, or the first of its dust of the world, when he established the heavens, I was there. So does that mean that person is now God? Because now that person, that per hold on, let me finish, and then I want you to respond, right? This person has now been personified as a person by saying, I existed, I was there in the beginning of the heavens and the earth. So if you're saying that Jesus is God, because in John 17 verse 5 it says, and give me the glory that I had with you before the world was, then you must then concede that Proverbs chapter 8 verse 23 is also speaking about a God as well. Now, the last part I want to point out, it also says in John 17 verse 5, it says, give me the glory that I had with you before the world was. Hold on a minute. How can God be given glory? I thought glory belongs to God in itself. How can God be given glory? In fact, in John 17 verse 21, in John 17 verse 21, right? It's my last point back. Yeah, thank you. In John 17 verse 21, and then I would like you to respond. Uh, I will, and I have most of them noted, but if there's any points I missed, please tell me. Right, it says here in 21, it says. that they may all be one, even as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, so that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, the glory which thou hast given me. See, this is the understanding in, on John 17, verse 5. The glory that has been given to me, I have given it to them. So the same glory that you're speaking about, the disciples also had the same glory. So has so is the disciples God now? Yes. Please answer my okay. question. So glory. Do you know what the energy essence is thinking of? Tom. Okay, so the essence possesses the energies. His energies being his actions. So in terms of his uh, The Almighty God in Hebrew is El Shaddai. Right? Yes. The father was always called El Shaddai. No, he was referred to as Kulios Kulios. Look, he okay, says, show me. why do you call me Lord Lord? The Greek is Kulios Kulios. Okay, That's Lord. Like God. But Lord, hold on one no, second. Not, not just Lord, Lord Lord, Kulios Kulios. Okay, I get it. I understand. I get it. Right. But if you've been referred to as Lord. Not just Lord. Don't just well, hold on one second. You said Kulios Kulios. Yes? yes. Right. If you've been called, if you've been referred to as Kulios Kulios. Does that mean that Jesus is God? Yes. Because he was referred to as Kyrios Kyrios? And he said, no, he, the caveat is, and do not do what I say. He's responding to, you do not do what I say. I am clearly God. Show me, show, that's your interpretation. That's not my interpretation. Read, read, okay. read that whole verse. Please tell me. Okay. Read that whole, whole verse. The whole chapter? Just the verse that you were referring to. The one before and the one before. So you want the verse before now? Yeah. What verse are you referring to? Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Oh. Luke 
chopped off. Uh, well, eight, right? Six versus forty six. I'm gonna call from the Bible study. Uh, 46. Yes, 46. The good man out of the good treasure of his heart produces good. Is that right? Luke, Luke? chapter 6, verse 46. Yeah, I'm reading from 45. Yeah. yeah. The, the good speaks. man out of the good treasure of his heart produces good, and the evil man out of his out of his evil treasure produces evil. Right? But out of the abundance of the heart of his mouth speaks. Why do you call me Lord? Lord? and not do what I tell you. Right, so Jesus is, no, hold on a minute. <laughs> You're misunderstanding this completely. Jesus is saying, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you do not do what I say, right? So that's the caveat, so let's continue, right? Everyone who comes to me and he hears my word and does them, I will show you what he is like. He is like a man building a house. who dug deep and laid the foundation upon a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream broke against the house and that couldn't shake it because it had been uh, been well built. But he who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without foundation against which the stream broke. So Jesus is given a parable. He's given an example. No, no, hold on one second. Hold on. Let me respond to you. Right. Jesus is saying, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you don't listen to what I say? And Jesus, so the caveat is not the part where Jesus said, call me Lord, Lord. That's not the caveat. If someone, so Jesus called Kyrios Kyrios, it's not the caveat here because Jesus is not laying emphasis on that caveat. No, he's not, and I'll tell you why. I will tell you why he's not laying emphasis on that. I'll tell you how that's okay. Right? What you're doing is capitalizing in only two words here, which is Kyrios Kyrios, and completely disregarded what Jesus' explanation to that was. Right? Jesus says, so Jesus likens a person who does not follow his examples to like a house been built with very shaky foundation. I'm just paraphrasing. But for those who follow in the words of Jesus, in fact, when the Samaritan lady came to Jesus, Jesus says, um, uh, the verse he says, he says, whoever shall follow my word shall not see death. Right? He says, I am the resurrection and the life. That's the verse. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Who who follows my words? So Jesus is speaking about following his footsteps. He who follows my footsteps shall not see death. Now, of course, the disciples at the time all saw death. So it's meant to be understood in a parable, right? Hold on, one second. One second, one second, one second. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Because you have misunderstood the verse, and I'm I'm telling you why you did. And then you can respond. Can I say something? No, no, no. Let me finish. I want to finish. I want to finish. You said about Jesus calling himself the No. Hold on, one second. One second. Let me finish. Let me finish. What I am saying to you is that you are putting great emphasis on two verses, two words that Jesus said, which is Kerios Kerios, right? Which means Lord, Lord, right? There are other people in the New Testament that's called Lord. Even in the Old Testament, there are pe people who've been yes, referred to as Kerios. Yes, yes. Are you saying that they haven't? Yeah, so, no. like, uh, hold on, hold on. Because you keep on saying things which ultimately counteract your point. So you said, I emphasize, but I don't actually mention the caveat or the context. Now, he's saying, why do you call me Lord, Lord? Kerios, Kerios. Not just one Kerios, Kerios, Kerios. Which means he's God. People are professing to the fact he is God. And he's saying, if you do what I say afterwards, the caveat you talked about, if you do what I say, you will be a wise man because you will confirm you do the acts in accordance to your faith that faith being he is Kulios Kulios and if you act in accordance to that belief you will be a wise man now why is he saying that because he's putting emphasis to his previous words he is Kulios Kulios and follow me and do as I, I say it. because if you do as I say you will be like the wise man now please tell me how I misinterpreted okay I want to no, 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 hold on Actually, I want to respond to I want to okay go on go on you know how you said about other people called laws in the old they were called Elohim right as my master, 
when the New Testament it clearly says, Yet for there is but one God, the Father from whom all things came and from whom we live. And there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, from whom all things came and from whom we live. So there is a distinction between the Lord used as masters and in the yes. Lord used as Jesus Notice Christ. Notice what it says. Because if, you, says if, if you look at the Shema, it means here we Israel, the Lord our God is one. And in the New Testament, Paul clearly says, but there is one God, the Father, from whom all things came and from whom we live. And there is but one Lord Jesus Christ. And what is, so the Lord our God is one, clearly confirms the statement. Okay, let making. me respond. And, right. and another thing I want to make, my friend, Sorry. Jesus calls himself the Lord of the Sabbath. Okay, the Sabbath is a divine title given okay, to Yahweh in the Old Testament. All right, it's me, given let, to let God me, in the Old let Testament. Me respond. Let me respond. You, can you say Muhammad is the Lord of Umrah? Can you say Muhammad is the Lord of Ramadan? Can you say Muhammad is the Lord of the five daily prayers? You cannot say that okay, because let, that let would me be respond. shit. Let me respond. And <laughs> Jesus calling himself the Lord of the Sabbath, it clearly shows myself that Jesus was, it clearly shows myself, uh, uh, my friend, that Jesus was God. Okay, right. So, notice he read a verse where Jesus said that there is only one God. There was only one God and then there's one Lord. So there is a distinction. Lord, our God is one. No, hold on one second, let me finish. I didn't really interrupt you. There is a distinction between one God and one Lord. Now the question is, is the word Lord and the word God, is it synonymous? No, they're not. In John 17 verse three, let me finish. In John 17 verse three, Jesus says that this is life eternal, that they may know you, the only true God. The only true God, so that completely debunks, that completely refutes your point. Now, the question we should be asking, what does the actual word Kyrios mean? Kyrios what does it mean? Twice. What does... Twice. Let me, no, let, let, let me finish. Twice. I, I heard you, I heard you. Twice. You're wrong with John 17. I heard you, I heard you. You're wrong with John 17. I heard you. Now let me finish, right? Now, what does Lord mean? Let's get up to, let's get the definition of the word Lord. Right. I also do want to clarify, you can't quote somebody who is a Lord God. Uh, in the Christian theology, for example, God's a classic... Sorry, person. sorry, sorry, I haven't finished. I, I did, I was patient for you to finish. I just need to finish my point. Right. Lord means a man of noble rank. A man of noble rank or high office, a nobleman. Nowhere. I challenge you, even from the Greek, give me from the Greek that the word Kyrios means God, from the, from the Greek lexicon, show me from the Greek lexicon that the word Kyrios means God, I challenge you on this, that's number one, number two, no, I haven't finished, I have not finished, number two, you mentioned where it says Kyrios, Kyrios, but I have explained to you that that is not the caveat, Jesus is given an example that why are you calling me Lord and you do not follow in what I tell you that you should do? And then he likened the example to a house with weak foundation. That is the example that he has given. But what you have done, you've only magnified just this two words, curious, curious. Not taking into consideration that there are other people in the Old Testament that are also called curious. No, no, hold on one second. Law. Let me finish. All the laws Let me finish. Wait, 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 hold on one Let's second. One second. You have not Four taken into you have not taken into consideration that there are other people in the new in the Old Testament that are also call Lord, right? But you're not going to say that they are God. In fact, in fact, I have two more verses. Then you can. I, I, will, hold no, on, hold I have on. two more. In terms of His glory, that's an energy, right? And we say that the essence is not in terms of creation, in terms of the human form of Jesus. He is given glory. Jesus is human form is an energetic manifestation, and the energies of glory is handed to Jesus. The energy possesses the essence. Do you understand? The energy possesses the essence. So the essence possesses the energy. Sorry. And let me continue because I, I, you gave me several points on the review. Seventeen three. The Father is the only true God, right? That's now, what he says. Right? Yeah. He's our say. He has our say at tea. He. Possess, uh, he uh, derives the essence of himself, right? He's the originator. He is the only true God. Who? 
the father. I agree with you. He derives the essence. But then that debunks your whole. No, hold on, hold on. He derives the essence. We are fine with saying that. You just refuted We know. Hold on, hold on. You I stayed quiet. Now allow no, me to on, speak. Go on, go on. Okay. He derives the essence. He's Artaphaos. He's our say, right? So we affirm a monarchy in the Trinity. We're monarch Trinitarians, correct? Do you, do you know what that is? You're a monarch Trinitarian. Yeah, we're monarch Trinitarians. So we what, affirm so? that the Father is the one who in rank. Exactly. Rank. In authority, our, our economy. So you don't believe that they're all equal in the God? No, in the sense of authority and in the sense that the Father derives the essence. But, but so are the they one. equal in the Godhead? They're, no, they're equal in power. Don't interrupt me. So in terms of him being the originator, he's our say. He is the one true God because he derives the essence. We have no issue in saying that. I love 17.3. It's a fantastic verse. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's great. And in terms of Proverbs, now, I'd be interested for you to hear this. You do realize that early church, just speak to people like uh, David, like Mary, as being lowercase God. They have the noose. Do you know what the noose is? The noose is for taking part of the divine energies. Say, for example, you're a holy person, you're a prophet. You can have the divine energies in creation. So we would say that these people are lowercase g. We're fine in saying that they're God. Lowercase. God. There's no capitals. No, so There's no capitals. We in say the capital. So again, you're just making no, a fallacy, no, right? No, uh, we're not making a fallacy. When we say lowercase g, because no, no. When we say lowercase g, we say right. uh, theosis, right? Taking part in the divine energy, you become a divine person. Now, does this make sense to you? Wait, who, who becomes a divine person? Lowercase g, the taking part in the divine energies. I'm, I don't, I'm not sure if you're unfamiliar with Eastern Orthodox theology, but that's what we affirm.